Yes, gang, this is what's going on at Twitter headquarters right now. They're at this very moment. And that's because reports are that Twitter is indeed being sold to Elon Musk, thus ushering in the beginning of the end of the horrific nightmare of woke cancel culture and social media. In this video, we're going to take a look at the deal that appears to be finalized. We're going to see how leftists have gone utterly hysterical over it all. And stick me at the very end of this video when I'll reveal precisely why this represents nothing less than the beginning of the final and definitive end to wokeism once and for all. You are not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steven with you. Great to be with you. As always, I'm your daily fake news antidote. So come on into your patron professor's den where I help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. If you have already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe. And before we begin, gang, make sure to click on that link below and let's celebrate the demise of woke cancel culture by getting yourself and the patriots in your life some of our awesome merch wear. We've got some of the best patriot gear where you can pick out something that spreads Patriot hope far and wide and supports my channel here at the same time. As you know, we've got uh, we've been having some hard times of late on this channel and your support means more now than ever. So make sure to click on that link below. Get your Patriot merch today. These designs are punchy and fun, but they're not going to stick around for long. So click on that link in the description below to both support me and spread Patriot hope. And I can't thank you enough for it. I've got my everything woke turns to you know what shirt i like that one all right gang as i'm sure you know by now it's being widely reported that twitter's board has accepted elon musk's 43 billion dollar offer to buy the company outright apparently the board was under major pressure from shareholders to sell and according to some analysts the twitter board couldn't find what they were calling a white knight to come in and rescue them as a second bidder that way they can try to quote save the company from the evil likes of elon musk but it was not to be and so musk's official uh, offer has uh, been, it looks like, accepted. Twitter shares were up 3% on the news that the Twitter Corporation was, in fact, expected to accept Musk's offer. And you know what also was up? The blood pressure of leftists all <laughs> across the country. I mean, conservative congressional candidate Robbie Starbuck rightly tweeted out, Twitter is reportedly accepting the offer Elon Musk made. We're about to see a November 2016 level freakout from the left. And of course, that didn't take long. Right on cue, the far left journalist Michael Tracy had a temper tantrum over all this. He tweeted out just literally minutes ago, dark days ahead. There's only one man who should be celebrating Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> I mean, they just never, ever tire bringing in the Russians. I mean, it's so bizarre. It's cultic. I mean, it really is. It's it's the Russians who are the real beneficiaries of Elon Musk's takeover. The dark days of the Russians are ahead. <laughs> I don't know what accent that was, but my, I don't know what mentality thinks this way. The ultra leftist Rob Reiner, meathead from All in the Family, he tweeted out, Now that Elon Musk is buying Twitter, the question for all of us is, will he allow a criminal who uses platform to lie and spread disinformation to try to overthrow the U.S. government to return and continue his criminal activity? And if he does, how do we combat it? <laughs> But the Sean King, the race huckster par excellence, said it all. At its root, Elon Musk wanted to purchase Twitter's not about left versus right. It's about white power. The man was raised in apartheid by a white nationalist. He's upset that Twitter won't allow white nationalists to target, harass people. That is his definition of free speech. These guys are absolutely unhinged. It is glorious. I mean, seriously, butter the popcorn, gang, because this leftist meltdown is just getting started. I mean, think about it. See, Twitter. Twitter was just taken away from them. Twitter can no longer be used as an instrument of woke cancel culture. And, of course, that means that we're going to see the reinstatement of President Trump's account in the very near future. Trump, as you know, was permanently banned by the woke cancel culture leftists at Twitter, and his reinstatement would be a major, if not the single major symbol that leftist cancel culture has been soundly 
defeated. That permanent ban was a symbol of the less power over our culture, our national discourse, and now it is gone. And that, to me, when all is said and done, that is the biggest takeaway in all of this. Of all the things to consider here in terms of the significance of this buyout, I think the biggest, most long-lasting takeaway is that we're seeing nothing less than the beginning of the end of woke cancel culture. Woke cancel culture is collapsing right before our very eyes. And I don't think that's an overstatement. And that's because Elon Musk has effectively turned free speech into a very, very lucrative business model. All the while, the very same time, companies like Disney and Netflix are proving the age-old adage, get woke, go broke. So this is a sort of a dialectic economic factor here. This is key to understanding why the age of woke cancel culture is collapsing. Free speech equals soaring profits. At the same time, wokeness equals economic ruin. Now, we talked about this before. In fact, I talk about this today on Sebastian Gorka's show. Make sure you tune into that. But what Musk has basically done here is he's, in effect, turned free speech into a multi-billion dollar business model. And this is a business model that can be repeated over and over again. Now, the obvious prerequisite to the business model is you first off have to be an ultra-billionaire. So this is, <laughs> this is solely for you billionaires out there like Peter Thiel and others. Second, you have to establish yourself as a red-pilled free speech champion, which Musk has effectively done. And then thirdly, you boldly go into a woke company that upsets a lot of people because of its cancel culture nonsense. And you first buy up the largest share of stock in that company to see if that changes things. And if not, then you buy the company outright. And boom, the stock price is that company will soar. That's the business model. Musk is going to make his money back in spades. But that's just one side of the economic equation. On the other side, you have the always proven age-old adage, get woke, go broke. And this is exactly what we've been seeing of late. We've got, of course, CNN Plus, the much touted and celebrated and Bollywood streaming service and the most distrusted name in fake news they've officially gone bust in mere days after all the pomp and fa fanfare surrounding their rollout cn plus is now officially cn minus they're done they're over then of course netflix in the same week imploded this is beyond astonishing according to zero hedge netflix is on course to lose over 90 billion dollars yes that's billion with a b they're on course to lose over $90 billion in market value over the last two quarters, including this one. Again, Elon Musk recognized the common factor behind Netflix implosion, tweeting out, quote, the woke mind virus is making Netflix unwatchable. So you've got CNN Plus collapsing, you got Netflix collapsing, and then of course, of course, we can't forget the ultra-woke Disney demise happening as well. Disney just lost their special tax status and legal autonomy after their radically pro-LGBT agenda was exposed. Thank you, Chris Rufo. And as a result, Disney has lost nearly $50 billion. Yes, that's a, once again, billion with a B in market value. So this is what I mean by this economic dialectic equation that we're seeing here. So on the, on the one side, embracing free speech each advocacy is poised to make you billions, while on the other side, embracing wokeism is poised to cause you to lose billions. Which, uh, I mean, which one of these uh, these business models do you think uh, more and more people are going to embrace? To me, that's what makes what is happening here with Elon Musk taking over Twitter so significant. He has effectively and publicly exposed wokeism to be an utter and total economic fraud, an elitist liberal fad that is economically unsustainable and is thereby guaranteeing wokeism's eventual and total demise, at least when it comes to successful corporate enterprises. So we will obviously be keeping our eyes on how things develop here, but there is no question. I mean, this what an amazing way to start off the week. This may indeed be bigger and have far more uh, far reaching ramifications than any election. It really is that exciting. 
Now, before you go, you'll definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on why the future belongs to populists like Marine Le Pen. While she just lost the French presidential election yesterday, many analysts are coming out and saying that nationalist populism won and it won big time. You're not going to want to miss this. So make sure to click on that link and I'll see you over there. God bless.